Harleywood, welcome back. All right, it's time. We are going to review this custom P365 X Macro. There is very little still factory on this thing. And in fact, I still probably have one more thing I'm gonna do to it, but it's much, much better than it was from the factory. Let's get into it. All right, up first, that beautiful Icarus Precision Grip Module. Now, the beauty of this one, this is actually for the P365 and it's called the subframe. So you'll notice the dust cover portion right here doesn't come up quite as far as the end of the slide on the X Macro, okay? This slide, the subversion, will actually fit a traditional P365, which will stop right there, or your XL or your X Macro, and it'll come out just a little bit further, like you see here. So it's kind of nice. You have a little bit of flexibility with this sub frame. I mean, just look at the work on this thing. Now, this is an aluminum frame. This is not your plastic grip module from uh, Wilson Combat or directly from SIG. And look, it actually already has your thumb ledge milled into it, right? So guys who are doing those Go Gun thumb ledges or Align Tactical, which I do have an Align Tactical extended and offset mag release there. We'll get into that in a second. But you don't need to with this, all right? You've got that thumb ledge built in. But probably my favorite part about this gun, maybe maybe two things, is this palm swell back here. I mean, look at how that marries to the contour of your hand. I mean, it just folds right into it and the beaver tail. Now, I've never had a problem with slide bite on my 365, but there's just something nostalgic and sexy about a beaver tail on a pistol. Just look at that thing. Now, I bought the 365X Macro with this Sig Romeo Zero. This thing is trash. It is booty. <laughs> I'm going to replace it. The interface is garbage. I do like that it has the, the metal shroud on it to kind of protect it, but it's got this single button interface that's way back inside here. It's clunky. This is this is a horrible design. Sig, throw this joker in the trash and come out with something better. This is this is not good. And now the Align Tactical offset and extended mag release lever there. So you can see it sticks out just a little bit further than a standard mag release, but also notice how it's shifted up, all right? Especially on a frame like this X Macro from Icarus Precision, look how highly undercut that grip is. If it wasn't for this offset upwards on that mag release, my fingers would be over top of it, all right? And I'd have to adjust my grip in order to get to it. But as is, I can get to it without adjusting my grip at all. On the front there, you'll see the Streamlight TLR7 sub. Now, be warned, there's a couple different versions of the sub, and especially when it comes to holster fitment, you really need to know which version the holster accommodates before you buy your 7 sub, all right? This one is the 1913A, which is compatible with a 1913 pick rail. That's what the Icarus Precision has here, all right? And at first, I got a holster, I'll show you that here in a second, but I got a holster that just said it was for the TLR7 sub, and I got a TLR7, I got the SIG P365 P3, P3 version, and it did not fit, all right? That version's actually a little bit fatter than the one designed for the 1913A rail, all right? So if you're gonna get this Icarus Precision, if you're gonna get the holster that I'm gonna show you here in just a second, you need the 1913A version. Now, this one is only 500 lumens. You know, it's not gonna be something that's gonna throw out you know, 50, 60, 70 yards. It's going to be for room clearing inside your house, doing some close up work. 500 lumens is what I would call kind of your bare minimum. And um, especially for like a, a nightstand gun or something like that, more than sufficient. Should I switch out that barrel? What do you guys think? Who's your favorite barrel manufacturer? Hit me up in the comments below. And then this, this is probably the best upgrade that I have made to this firearm. I mean, the Icarus Precision is pretty dope, but the trigger on the 365X Macro was trash. Even when I, when the guy handed it to me across the counter, I made sure it was clear and I was working through the trigger and I was like, oh my God, there's so much spongy take up on the front end. Like we think Glock triggers are bad. The stock trigger in this, I, although I've had some guys say they've got some good ones, the stock trigger that came in this one was atrocious. So this is the M Carbo flat trigger, all right? This thing is incredible. There's some really good videos on how to install it. I'm not gonna go through all of that. In fact, I'll post a link in the description below. If you get one of these M Carbo triggers or you need to know how to replace the trigger on a P365, really good instructional video down below. But it's got a flat bow face on it. And the trigger that came on this angled way out like this. Like it came way out here like that, all right? I'll, I'll roll in a picture here so you can see it. 
but this is actually already set back. It's got 33% less angle on it, all right? And what that translates to is more room for your finger inside the grip module, all right? Especially if you have gloves on, there's not a lot of space on that, all right? On these subcompact frames, gun is unloaded. There is a lot less take up on this. Now I'll roll in some footage here, but on the stock trigger, there are several millimeters just of take up. That means just to get that trigger back until you hit the wall and the sear starts to engage. And then there's a couple millimeters of just creep built into it where you're actually working through that sear and then the brake, all right? And there's a, a little bit too much over travel for my liking in the brake on this, all right? Which then translates to more reset needed to kind of reset and get back to your next shot. This helps to eliminate that. It's really hard to see, I'll have to roll in a picture, but there's also a set screw underneath here that you can adjust to reduce the over travel on this trigger. So not only does the trigger start back further, allows you to get more finger into the, the trigger guard there, there's a lot less take up until you hit that wall. The creep is probably about the same if I had to guess. And then the over travel, you can pretty much eliminate it. Now, if you tighten that screw in too much, you will actually cause a failure and the gun won't actually fire. So they say that when, when, you, when you tighten that screw in there, you wanna see two threads of that bolt coming out the top. I actually did three. I took it just a little bit further and when it breaks, it just stops. There's no over travel at all in it. Watch this. There's that creep. A little more creep, a little more, and the break. Look how clean that was. No over travel. And let's see how, how small that reset is. Oh man, just, I, I actually went a little too far. Just a couple millimeters of reset. Watch this reset. So nice, man, no over travel at all. This is such a nice trigger. So much better than that factory trigger. And this is the holster that's designed for the TLR7 Sub Light from Shapeshifter Concealment. So I'll post a link in the description below where you can check them out. It has kind of that retention wing in there so that you can push it back, get it tighter into your belly when your belt wraps around this. Um, I'm, I'm learning to love these clips. These are This is the first time I've used these hard spring style clips. It is very, very secure when you get it on the belt. It's just for me, especially if I'm in the truck and I'm about to get out and I'm trying to holster this thing, um, the, having, I, and maybe it's just that there's two of them, maybe that's what it is, but I used to just have a single clip and I could really just grab it like this and get my belt in behind it. Here, there's just a little bit more finesse that has to happen. So very nice holster from Shapeshifter Concealment. Now I have carried either compact or full-size guns for probably the past, I mean, I, I, I rotate in a Glock 43 every once in a while. Let's say I'm going to the soccer field for my son's game. It's the middle of summer, it's super hot. I'm wearing, you know, fitted clothes. I'm gonna be bending, I, I might sub, sub in a 43. But other than that, I've carried either a Glock 19 or a P320 and that's it, like nothing else. So it was a shift for me to get down to the 365. And it wasn't until they came out with that 17 plus one capacity. If it wasn't for that, I would not have gone into the 365. I'm, I'm just like, if I can comfortably carry it, I want as many rounds on me as I can. So SIG finally got me into this and God, what an awesome gun. Look at the undercuts on this frame. These things are just beautiful. God, I love this thing. And that's it guys, the SIG P365X Macro, Icarus Precision, Streamlight, Align Tactical, M Carbo, Garbage Optic from SIG, but that is a nice gun. I'm gonna switch, if, hey guys, give me some recommendations on this thing, I gotta get rid of this. And if anybody says Hollow Sun, I better not hear you bitching about Olight being made in China. And I'm gonna put links in the description below to everything that we went through today. That's it guys, I appreciate your time watching. If you like this video, do me a favor, give it a like down below. It just helps the algorithms go a little bit further, helps my videos show up in other feeds for people who like similar content to you. Lots more content to come. I appreciate your time watching and I'll see you in the next one.